I think the Burke family and 16-year-old James Yule have got worries. I don't think they can get out from the arena wall or dead metal. 101 has a little prod, a little tentative look to see what's going on, and they're away now. Out go Overkill, back into the main arena floor, away from the corner patrol zone, and 101 coming in with a side slam there, 101. Overkill equal to that. One or two slight scratches and smudges to the paint work. Otherwise, overkill, undamaged, just like 101. This is a, a very tight clash. Oh, goodness me, I thought they were going to drive themselves into the pit there, James Yule and 14-year-old Lawrence Burke, who builds radio-controlled cars in his spare time and wants to be a movie star. Driving in now, overkill underneath 101 towards Killalot. But look, no purchase of the Lance there. On the body shell of 101, Again, the tank track simply threw off Killalot's lance, and we haven't seen that too often in Robot Wars. The nemesis of so many competitors, the great Killalot. There's young Amy in the middle with the mascot. Mike Franklin at the controls. Overkill, again, has these ponderous spells. Statues, what's that on the arena floor? Something's come off the bottom of Overkill. They're like a, a plate of some sort, but they're in trouble now. Kill a lot of bash in there. Overkill flipped up by Kill a lot, and that's the end, surely. Flipped over. Well, it was a worthy old battle, and they know the end has come now. And it's merely a question of damage Six. control. That was a good fight. 101 the victors, they go through. We've got a, a rangefinder on it, so you just drive up to the robot, and as soon as it sees another robot, bang, it fires. So you don't have to worry about firing a weapon, you just it fires itself. Kill. How sophisticated is that? And you didn't tell us about that, so why didn't it work in there? I don't know, probably a wire come off or something. Else. Oh. <sighs> so we're hoping to see it for the next bout, because you're through anyway. That's fine, yeah? Yeah. Amy, you've got something to celebrate on your birthday, haven't you? Did you think it was going to be that good? No. No. It was easy, wasn't it? Yeah. You proud of your dad? Oh, good. Right. But it was a fantastic battle, wasn't it? it you was. must be really, really <laughs> proud. we we'll be back next year. Yeah? yeah. This is a aerial guard. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> oh, that was meant then. to be detached. That's detachable there. Not quite like yeah. this, though. <laughs> Overkill, over the top, over and out, 101 through, and next up, the Iron Mask and Weldor. <laughs> From Yorkshire, the Iron Mask. A father and son team from the Seavers family. The motor's come from an invalid carriage. It's axe powered by a 12-volt starter motor. The shell is fabricated aluminium. What? No iron? My name's Chris Seavers, and this is my son, Tate. This is our robot, the Iron Mask. Its main weapon is this axe on the top, which is powered by this electric motor at the back. It also has claws on the rear wheels and teeth on the front. From Belfast, Weldor. Powered by two 12-volt wheelchair motors, this robot costs £1,800 to build, has a pneumatic forklift capable of lifting 90 kilos and a deadly hammer that shells 4mm thick aluminium. Hey, my name's Phil, I'm Lundy. This is Ryan Crilly. We're from Belfast. This is our robot, Weldor. We've got a 4mm aluminium shell. Um, we've got a pneumatic forklift at the front, uh, capable of lifting 65 kilos. We've got a pneumatic hammer at the rear, um, capable of punching holes in 3 mil mile steel plate. Um, well, hopefully this will be very effective in our first fight. Roboteers, stand by. There's Iron Mask with Chris Severs and young Tate. And Weldor from Belfast, Phil in Lundy. Three. And Ryan Crilly there on the right-hand side. Activate. Talented is Phil in. He wants to build and fly his own two-seated aeroplane one day. And his Weldor robot just nudging gently. Nuzzle on the muzzle of Iron Mars. There's Philip Lundy, Gaelic footballer, triathlete as well. Iron Mars, a little shove. This is rather slow so far, rather pensive. Flick there of the Iron Mask 
Reaper. Axe weapon. It's powered by a 12 volt starter motor, which is on top there. And that's exposed. Well done, meanwhile, under the belly. And I thought this might happen that the iron mask at the front of the robot of the same name might cause problems and might be impaled. And that's what's happened on the spike of Weldor. And you see Weldor now can effectively drag Iron Mask where they want him to go. Dropping him, though. Iron Mask got away. No Lawrence DiCaprio in their team. And the vote if the Iron Mask is based on the film of the same name. Up and over. Now, cease. Up and over and immobilised Iron Mask. Well done, well done. They go through to round two. Good fight, good fight, good game, yeah. good game. How was that for you? Very good, very exhilarating. Uh, we certainly weren't making any impression. Danton is, is uh, armour, mm. so lucky enough the flipper worked well first, and uh, I think that's what done the job for us. Well, I'm not too sure about exhilarating, but Weldor goes through the Iron Mask gone. Next up, Eric against King Buxton. From East Sussex, Eric. Eric's jaw can crush with a force of one and a quarter tons a car starter motor, wheelchair motors and speed controllers used with an aluminium and stainless steel body. Hi, I'm Mike. This is Ian. This is Bruce. And this is Eric. Eric runs on two wheelchair motors powered by 24 volt batteries. The chassis is a space frame triangulated aluminium chassis fully welded the cladding is all stainless steel underneath the pretty paintwork and we have hydraulically operated jaw i can just show how this opens that will lift up to about two and a half times that level probably up to about here when we press the button and that's capable of lifting about 200 kilos and it goes with quite a wallop so we're looking forward to using it from essex king buxton <laughs> Back again from the last series with a revamp, a lifting arm with ramming spikes, a cutting blade at 14 miles an hour, it's the fastest in the heat, and at three millimetres, the aluminium body shell is thick. Hi, I'm Simon and Phil. We're back um, from the last wars uh, with King Buxton. Um, it's been improved, a lot more power, um, better electronics, should be under better control, fingers crossed. We had a little bit of problem with that last time. Um, the weapon's now been improved. We can actually lift 80 kilograms. We were a bit poor on lifting before, but it's still got sharp spikes. Also got this rotary cutter on the back, which is uh, quite talky, should slash through um, and make quite a nice mess. And um, the armour is the same again, which stood up quite well, three millimetre uh, aluminium. And uh, did the job for us last time, so he does it again. Robot ears, stand by. And so we have Eric, young Bruce Nicholson, Ian Nicholson there in the middle, and Mike Hamilton on the right, and King Buxton. Three. The great pals, two, Simon Harrison at the controls, and one. Phil Brett. And at 14 miles an hour, it's a nippy start from King Buxton with the front lifting prongs immediately on the attack on Eric. Eric looks solid to me. Again, they come in on the attack. And that's the first time we've seen Eric's jaws open, trying first to raise King Buxton in the air and then clamp on. Oh, and King Buxton's lost one of the tips to its front rams there on the left-hand side. It's gone. Somewhere on the arena floor is a steel tip. Eric towards the pit. Oh, goodness me! And King Buxton is left teetering on the brink of oblivion. And Eric, oh, no, has backed itself down into the pit. King Buxton Cease. spun away and Eric went down. Look at this. You'd have thought then King Buxton was going to go, but it's Eric reversing into the pit. You won't see that in a driving lesson. Have you passed your driving test? Yes, a long time ago, though. I think I'd better take another <laughs> one. <at least> so. <laughs> so how's the tummy lucky. now? How's the nerves? Um, I think that one's over. I think I'll be all right now. Did, but, it, did um, it go as soon as you got in there and the adrenaline started pumping and you no, started it's thinking... it's just as bad as ever. Yes, I'm here. No, 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 no. no Were no, you I'm shaking? Like it yes, still am. Oh, let's see, let's see. Again, no. again, again. Shaky, quakey, but through King Buxton, Weldor, 101 and Centurion. This is how they line up for the second round, but before that, <whistles> half-time break. Our survivors are recovering from that last round, so now it's time to take a breather. Now, it's a well-known fact that George Best liked to be well-oiled, but not as well-oiled as these guys. It's our robotic soccer cup. Hey, 
Let the trials begin. Craig, a couple of ways you can win through here. By scoring a goal, of course, Nasher did that. Evil Weevil failed to score, but it was the last robot standing. Those two joined Velociripper on our leaderboard. Next up, from Wales, the general with the James Seam, Alan Hayden and Tom. 79 kilos, two 24-volt motors, with that front battering ram to scorch the ball in the back of the net. And Spectre from Warwickshire. Again, we have the same sort of power here and size, much lighter and probably quicker to the ball. And it has that added weaponry, the pickaxe. They're the Spectre team, Paul Howell, Mark Howell and Joe Hawkins. And the James boys with the general. <laughs> 